Every time I start a project where I want to include some kind of alert or display some kind of information, I think about the different ways of doing so. I've previously used LEDs that light up when conditions are met, I've used websites that display information, but this method is by far my favorite. Push notifications to your phone. Which brings me to the subject of today, Godify. Godify is self-hosted, it's open source, and it can run on Raspberry Pi, and it exposes a super simple to use API. Let's take a look at it. First up, it's always a good idea to make sure your Pi is fully updated. So we're going to do a quick sudo apt get update and sudo apt upgrade. Now let's head over to the Godify repository. And here we'll go to server releases and choose ARM7, which is the release for the Pi. So copy the link and then we'll use vget to download it. Next, we'll unzip it and then we can already run it using sudo dot forward slash godify and linux arm 7. Now it's listening on port 80. So let's navigate to a browser and enter the IP of the Pi into the browser. Here we're greeted with the login screen to godify. The default username and password is admin. Here we can create a new user with some stronger credentials and delete the default admin user. Then we can create a new application to get the token that we need to send push notifications. Next, we'll install Godify on a phone that needs to receive the messages. In this example, I'll use the app Godify has published, but you can actually use Godify in your own apps if you create some. I'll include a link to the documentation in case that's something you want to check out. When you open the Godify app, you'll want to type in the IP of your Pi if you're on the same network. Now, we aren't going to cover it in this video, but I'd recommend setting up a static IP for your Raspberry Pi so you have something persistent that Godify can run on. From there, you would set up port forwarding from your router to your Raspberry Pi, and then you can receive notifications even when you aren't on your local home network. Or in my case, I'll use the domain I've set up to reach the Pi. So I'll type that in and log in using my username and password that I created from the web view. Once logged in, that's all the setup you'll need on your phone. But I'll suggest removing the foreground notification, and here you can also change how the different notifications are handled based on priority. The priority is the value you define when you send the messages. Now we're back on the computer, and I'm going to install screen so Godify can run in the background. Then we'll cover two simple ways of sending messages. So screen is installed, and Godify is running in the background. So let's cover how you can use the Godify API. The first way we're going to cover is using curl, as that's a super simple way to do it from the terminal or from bash scripts. All you have to do is type curl x post with all caps, then http, and here you want to type the IP that reaches your Pi. If you're sending this message from your local network, like I am in this case, then you can use the local IP of the Pi. Otherwise, you'll need to use a public IP that's pull forwarded to your Pi, just as with the app. So we'll do dot forward slash message, question mark token, and here we'll paste the token from before. And then we'll end the quotes and do dash F and we'll input a title. I'm just going to call it Blue Hippo. And we'll do dash F again and include a message. Now you'll get a little bit of details about the message that you've sent. In case it fails, you're going to see it here. But if it went through successfully, it'll show up like this and it should reach your phone in about 30 seconds or so. The second method of interacting with the API that I want to cover in this video is through Python, as that's going to be the one that I'll use mostly in most of my projects. So we want to do Python 3, and we want to import requests, then we want to define the URL. Here you want to input the IP that you've used in the previous steps, and we'll input the token. Next, we're going to need some data. Here, I'm going to include a title, and I'm going to include a message. You can also input other things like priority here. Then we'll do request.post and we'll post the URL and the data and we get a response. If you get something like a 404, it means your IP is wrong or one of the previous steps has failed. 200 means OK. We can exit out of that. I'm going to include it in a quick Python file just to show you that it will work exactly the same way. From here, you can implement it in nearly every project. 
especially considering you can use it with Python. It also works with things like Home Assistant as it's just a simple API. That's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you found it helpful. And as always, have a good one.